Today I'm going to be showing you how to create an RTSP stream viewer using the Raspberry Pi over Unify video. Um, so now we're just starting up the Pi and right now we're going to be configuring it um, to kind of the default stuff. Get the video RAM set up and expanding the file system. Um, so mine always seems to boot up into the GUI so what we're going to do is once we get in here we're going to go to sudo rasby config um, once we get in the terminal here okay so now we're internal so we're going to go to sudo raspberry config and I apologize for the camera movement I have a really crappy phone mount um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to advanced options and what we want to do is we want to do a memory split and do a 256 um, this is our for our GPU so we want as much RAM in there as possible next thing we're going to do is we're going to wait network well we're going to do console auto login then we're going to do wait network at boot and we're going to do a slow boot I've had better luck with that um, then we're going to expand the file system and finish. We like to reboot now, yes. So after that, the Pi is going to reboot. It's going to come back up, and we're going to type in ifconfig. And this is going to allow us to see what IP address the Pi is on. And as you can see with my terrible camera skills, it is 192.168.1.206. So we know now that that is the IP address. So now we're going to go into Windows and open up PuTTY and type in 192, you know, same address. And now we are in PuTTY. So now that we're in PuTTY, we can type in PI username and Raspberry for the password. So now we're in Terminal and we're going to run sudo apt-get update followed by and and sudo app get upgrade dash y and and sudo reboot so this is basically going to update the pi then after that's done it's going to upgrade it it's going to answer yes to a green and then it's going to reboot it so it's a nice little one line of code it does everything for you and then after that's done uh, the pi is going to reboot and putty is going to have an error because the pi reboot from the network um, so this is dramatically sped up. It will probably take close to an hour to do a full update and upgrade. So now that that's done, now we want to get in and install Screen. After we log in, we want to install Screen in uh, OMX Player. Basically how this works is OMX Player is going to run the streams and Screen is going to split OMX Player into different sessions so that you can have that matrix of uh, different um, OMX players <clears throat> without screen uh, basically you can only run one camera at a time so that's a, that's a huge part so as you can see we already have that little line of code there and now it's installing it and rebooted now we're going to log back in and now we're going to be setting a static IP for our Pi so we're going to go to that again all this is in the description down below I recommend pausing the video so you can see more of um, how we're doing it. I wanted to get make this video as short as possible for people that just want to skip through this real quick and they have a general idea of what they're doing. Um, but it is a full tutorial. So basically what happens is we're going to put the static IP address in, but we're not quite done after we put the static IP address in. What I've noticed is if you if you just do this part, you will also get a DHCP address. Um, again, this IP address is going to be different um, depending on your network and your scenario that you're in. But I've set this one to 77. So after this, we're going to exit and go into another um, another file here after I get that done. So now we're going into another file in the Raspberry Pi. And basically we're going to turn DHCP off to my knowledge. So we're going to go to the bottom of this page, and we're going to paste in this little line of code. And that's going to deny DHCP on Etho 0. Change that according. That should be pretty much standard for most people. So we're going to reboot the Pi. We could, you know, reboot the network interface, but I just 
rather reboot it. Um, so now we're going to check our network connectivity to the internet by just typing sudo app get update and this will um, basically just check to make sure we have an internet connection. If you're not getting hits um, then you need to double check your network configuration. Um, but when you do get hits and gets um, then that means that your internet connection is valid um, and you have your network connection set up properly. So now that we have that we're going to create this uh, file in you're going to go down the link in the description below, I mean the description, not the link, and uh, copy that four camera matrix and just paste it in by right clicking. So as you can see, we have our four cameras here, um, and you see the RTSP, that's the URL, that's your, basically you can delete that and put the URL in there, and already the stuff is configured for a 1920 by 1080 p monitor. Um, everything's divvied up so if you have that monitor this should all just work so now we're gonna go into unify video and we're gonna select uh, our camera I only have one for this tutorial we're gonna say override suggested settings change medium 30 FPS and put that in about the 500 range uh, you can experiment with the bitrate um, we're gonna copy the medium so I like to leave high for recording and medium for streaming um, and then we're just going to basically get rid of all the RTSP URL block and paste in our own. Um, this is definitely, you're going to want this to be a wired connection for this uh, monitor. Um, on Amazon, I believe they're Wi-Fi Texas or Texas Wi-Fi. They sell this fantastic kit that allows, um, basically, you can take a PoE, 24 volt PoE and convert it with 5 volt little dongle. So you can par you can power your uh, Raspberry Pi right over PoE, um, the 24 volt. So I recommend that. Links in the description down below. So basically, the sudo chmod777 is unlocking that uh, file for the operating system, and the sudo update rc.d that is setting it to uh, boot up at startup, running the script at startup. So now we're going to create a cron job here. And this cron job we're just going to paste in is basically running the repair script every five minutes. So you can change that five to a one or a three or a two, and it's basically just going to run the repair script every five minutes. So if a camera stream goes down, it will see that and it will repair it um, if possible. You have to make sure you type in sudo cron tab um, dash e. So now we're going to reboot and we're going to see if this works now. And this is real time, this is not sped up whatsoever. And as you can see, all four camera streams are coming up right there. And there is uh, about one to two seconds delay um, from when I move my hand to when you see it on the screen, which is really great um, for an IP based camera system. Um, it's really incredible how fast that actually is. Um, so now. Uh, what we're going to do is, is we're going to change it up and we're going to do a six camera matrix. So we're going to go back in there, we're going to get rid of all this, um, and we're going to do a little bit more of a complex setup. So for my setup, I needed to show him six cameras on the screen. Um, and I would say you could probably do a max of about nine. So I'm copying this in and I'm going to paste it into the same file and um, this is again set up for a 1920 by 1080 screen I'm going to paste in all those RTSP stream URLs that I got from the Unify video server and I'm going to save that and now we're going to go into our cron tab and we're going to get rid of that five minutes um, so this is a, a uh, pizzeria kind of place restaurant and so I wanted to make sure we didn't get monitor burning. So how I set it up was, is the first line of code stops the uh, script, it stops all the camera feeds. And then we're going to turn off the TV um, at 12.02, and then we're going to turn the TV back on, uh, or the monitor, at 6 o'clock in the morning. And then, after the camera's turned back on, <clears throat> 6.02, we're going to start the camera script to show all the feeds. Um, and then what I have it do is that uh, second to last line of code right there is basically rebooting it 
once a week at six o'clock in the morning. Um, that's just for any inconsistencies or if something's not working, a just nice fresh reboot. Um, I know this can cause corruption over time, but um, it seems to be working all right. And then that last line of code, um, it runs the repair script every minute between 6 a.m. and <clears throat> 11 p.m. Um, <clears throat> you want it set up that way so that you're not running the repair script when the monitor's off because um, you can have problems with that. But you have to make sure that you're stopping the cameras and then turning the monitor off. I was running into problems if I just tried turning the monitor off. Um, so you have to make sure the cameras are stopped, monitor goes off, then monitor can come back on. And this has worked really well for me. If your monitor is not turning off, then it doesn't support that over HDMI. And unfortunately, you're going to have to find a different monitor or just not turn it off. So now we're going to watch this get booted up. And we're going to see if it works. Um, <clears throat> again, this is real time. Um, I haven't sped this video up whatsoever. So you can see now all the videos come up and they are working very well. There's no delay and then of course you can change out whatever video you want to go to each place, each camera matrix. So what I'm doing now is I'm unplugging the camera and um, I'm just going to show you how when the camera gets disconnected how they all come reconnected. And I've cut this video just so you're not sitting here for a minute watching the same screen uh, load. So. And now the cameras are coming back on. So, and that's about it. So that's how you do a four camera or six camera matrix with a Raspberry Pi and Unify video.